Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Today's session is very, very special, uh, at least to me. And I'm very sure it's, it will be very special for you. So today's session is about, is about thinking differently and changing your mindset to a better mindset. Thinking differently is an essential and fundamental concept of living a successful and fulfilling life and having a great career. Uh, the way you think will determine how you feel and how you dictate how to act. And for that, we have the master of thinking differently today with us to teach you how to have a successful career and change your mindset for the better. So without any further do let me introduce our speaker for the day. Our speaker today is uh, engineer Marine Madurado. She holds a master's in petroleum engineering from Imperial College of London. She also holds an MBA also from Imperial College of London. Um, that was her beginning of an 18 years of corporate career in the oil and gas living in Houston and London. During those years, Mabrinma noticed that the most successful people she met had a mindset of purpose and passion integrated as a way of being. The combination of technical and management skills with specific mindsets is the key to a successful career. She has spent the last 10 years teaching these mindsets to individuals and organizations in order to unleash their potential. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mabrinma Dron. Mabrinma, over to you. Thank you so much, Nihal. All right, well, first of all, I wanted to thank the Arab Oil and Gas Academy, now Pio Petro, for the opportunity to be in contact with all of you from all over the world, which for me is very exciting. And because I really love to teach these mindsets of passion and purpose, which I think are key for a successful career. And first, I'm going to to ask you visualize some of the people that you have around in your professional environment, or so even in your life. You probably know some people that are always working tirelessly. They're always enthusiastic. They don't seem to actually get tired. They always come up with initiatives, projects, and ideas, and they're also very inspirational. So when they come to you with their projects, you want to follow them. They, they inspire you. And they seem to be driven by something inside. And you wonder, eh, will I be able to catch up with them? And, and it's almost impossible because if you try to use your willpower against a passionate person, you're always going to lose because they are driven by something inside that gives them extra superpowers. And I, I Met many people are in my in my career that were very passionate, and I kind of research like a detective. What do these people have in common? And and eventually, when I realized that I wanted to be one of them, I started to experiencing the difference that it gives to my life to be passionate. So now I'm not going to speak so much for these people. I'm going to speak for myself because I I do what I feel passionate about. And what gets me is a sense of being light. So I don't experience burnout. I don't experience stress. And sometimes I really had to force myself to stop working because I love what I'm doing so much. And I think that that gives me and the people that I met that are very passionate, a competitive advantage because when normal people are trying to pull from the willpower, you have this fire inside and, and you also are energized. So imagine that you go to work in the morning and when you come back in the evening, you have more energy than what you have when you left in the morning. What will be the difference in your life if you were able to work and live that way? And I put here an example of someone who amazed me, that is uh, the honorary Lujana Moshin Darwish from Oman. I thought it was relevant since this initiative came from the Middle East, who just received the 2020 Middle East TV Award 
uh, award, which is a business award. And when you look at the biography of this woman, she's involved on so many committees and so many groups and so many activities that you wonder, how, how is that possible? How can someone be involved in so many things and excel at so many things? And the key differentiator is passion. So we are going to talk about how to activate that passion mindset in you. So how do you recognize passion in you? I'm going to bring you to something that maybe you haven't come across before. That's the concept of felt sense. This is a concept that comes from psychotherapy and is uh, as actual sense in your physical body. It's like your cells are actually vibrating differently when you are doing certain activities that are aligned with your blueprint, with your operating system. And I'm going to talk about blueprint and operating system in a while. So initially you start noticing something, you start noticing that's euphoria, that sense of your body vibrating, your body feeling lighter. And equally, you can feel with something does not agree with you. So imagine that you are being offered a job and you, you have a sense that something is not right. I heard this anecdote some time ago about a Japanese businessman that when he had to make a decision, he had dinner quite late, and then he makes in his mind the decision. He had to decide between A or B. He said, all right, I'm going for A. And then he has dinner and goes to sleep. If he has a, a good digestion, boom, the decision was the right one. And if he had a bad digestion, the decision was the wrong one. And the first time that I heard that anecdote, I thought, that sounds silly. But then something happened to me many years later, and I didn't make the connection initially, but again, another few years later, that I accepted an offer, a job offer, that I was hesitating. It was not aligned with my passion. And right after I hung up the phone, it was a phone interview, and I had just said yes, I got sick. I got really, really sick, one of the worst stomach sickness I ever had in my life. I had just had breakfast, then I have the job interview, and then I said yes, and then I got sick. So many years later, I made the connection. That is felt sense. So your body can tell you a lot of whether you're passionate about something or not. But I'm going to give you some other methods as well. First, I'm going to tell you where your passion is not. Your, your, your passion is not in your mind because this is not how human beings make decisions. We make decisions in our limbic brain and then we rationalize it. So sometimes you can ask yourself in trying to come up with rational explanations of why you should do something, but again, that's not where your passion is. So it doesn't matter how much you try to rationalize it, you try to convince yourself, there's something inside yourself that says, no, this is not aligned with me. And remember what is at stake here. I'm going to bring you all the time back to the beginning, to being those type of people, one of those people that are energized, that are excelling at what they do, that are super productive. If you want to have that kind of drive and that kind of passion, you are going to become like a detective in trying to figure out where should I go that is aligned with that kind of drive. So passion lives in your heart. And we heard that before, but the heart was considered like something abstract, like your emotions, something that you can't touch. And then the Heart Math Institute in California actually researched and found out that they are neural cells. There is a neurological circuit in your heart that is also making decisions 
So it's actually like you have a, a little brain inside your actual physical heart. And so there's where your passion lives. And they have actually investigated that for, for somebody to have perfect well-being and, and calm and peace, there needs to be a coherence between the waves that come from your heart and the waves that come from your brain. That's what they call heart coherence. And you can investigate and do some more research on that on the internet. Uh, but basically, you are going to have to ask your heart. And your heart is going to tell you what is actually meaningful for you. And I'm going to go farther to tell you that your passion is in your blueprint. So somehow, when you were born, you already have a blueprint of those things that will give you energy. And very early on in life, your, your, your life, your preferences were showing up. I have here a picture of me at five years old in my nursery school. Pretty much, I talked with the director and I said, let me do the presentation of the recital for the parents. So I was there with a the microphone, speaking, very comfortable, very happy. So this thing that I'm doing today with you and you are right now 300 people, it's not, it's not new. You know, that was already in my blueprint to be very comfortable in a stage to actually love talking to people, communicating. So this is one of my early memories. And what, what are your early memories? What were you passionate about? Remember, you're going to be like a detective. You're going to ask your parents if they still live, siblings, if you have your best friends. You're going to start trying to figure out what is that thing or different things that are going to activate you. And this is connected with your career because for someone who loves to speak in public or do you think that in a career from oil and gas, you will need to speak to people? Yes. You will need to speak to people whether you are a, the manager of the team or just part of the team. You are giving presentations. And if you probably have to also write or maybe you love technology, there are many things that were already in your blueprint and you need to find out which are those ones that give you energy. Just making sure that I, that I had the right one. Yeah. Since many of you are very technical, I thought that I use this analogy that the mindset, what is a mindset? A mindset is like an operating system. An operating system, some of some sort of you will be uh, fans with, uh, of Apple or some of you will be fans of Android or Windows. An operating system empowers you to do certain jobs, but at the same time, it gives you some limits. It takes you through a journey. So your mindset is going to determine the decisions that you make on a daily basis. And 90% of those decisions are unconscious. So for example, in the subconscious, unconscious mind, there are certain um, operations of your body, like breathing, uh, your, your heart beating. So you, you don't have to think about it. Imagine that you forget uh, the beating of your heart. That cannot, that cannot happen. So that's why that part of you, that operating system, it just grabs all these things that, that are going to be done automatic so you don't have to think about it. Imagine what it would be if you could program a mindset of passion inside that operating system. It will happen. It will happen automatically. You will all the time be aligning yourself with those things that are more meaningful for you, that energize you. So this is what I'm going to be helping you today. I'm going to be providing you with some methods so you can program your mindset in such a way that it just comes automatically. It comes to your default mindset. And for that, we are going to create new neuropaths, neuro pathways or habits. 
So, we are going to distinguish between your life passions and your work passions. Both are necessary for a great career. Okay, and then I'm going to explain in a minute why are both necessary. But in order to find your, your work passions or your life passions, you are going to ask yourself, how will my life be? How will my ideal life be? Or how my ideal work be? And then you're going to grab, I mean, not right now, but later on you can grab a piece of paper, blank paper, give yourself some time and ask yourself, what will be my life if my life was ideal? And I have put here some examples. It could be a perfect health, or you're traveling the world, you have plenty of money, your work life is fulfilling, or you are in a relationship, or you're doing something in service to the world, or you're having an intellectual challenge. Those are some examples. You just write down what is perfect, is ideal for you. Maybe you never asked yourself these questions. Maybe you thought, well, you know, if I'm lucky, life will give me whatever will give me. But the, the process, the process of having a great life starts with your consciousness, starts with your these decisions. And, and for that, you need to discover what is important, what is meaningful for you. For work, for example, for someone, the work environment will be very important, or that you have great colleagues, or you're solving environmental issues, or you're managing people. You need to know yourself and know what's important to you, that your work is rewarded financially, or that a company culture is a fit, that you have work-life balance. So all those things are pot potentials for people in this group. So now I'm going to <laughs> show you something that I came up with. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not the only one. There is a lot of talk these days about the donut model in, in the environmental context. But I'm going to talk about the, I, I was talking about the donut model before that in a whole different context. So imagine that you have this circle, right? And what, what I did when I was younger, and I didn't realize this concept of the donut model at the time to, to, to my peril that I, what I did when I was younger is that I extended my work life, my work life in all my time. So I designed my work life to occupy it, everything. And I didn't leave any space for my life, my actual personal life. So eventually, my work life was going over my health, over my relationships, because there was no space. I had not left any space for those things that were my life passions. So if I wanted to go, you know, wanted to go to the theater or I wanted to go out with my friends, so I was sacrificing all of that for my work. So I'm asking you, please don't do that. Find out what is important to you in your life, pure life outside of work, and leave this circle of the donut. Those are your life passions. And there, that space needs to be untouchable. Your work needs to revolve around your life, not the other way around. So you always need to leave that space in the middle. Maybe right now you are very young and you don't, have, um, you don't have a family, maybe you don't have children, so you think, oh, I can dedicate all my time to work. But even if you don't have children, but you have hobbies, you have you know, courses you want to do, you want to go for your runs if you do exercise or you want to do some kind of entertainment, don't spend all your time in work. That's, that's really an advice that I give you here. So now I'm going to go a little bit deeper on how I disco you discover your passions. Some time ago, I became a facilitator of a Californian system called the Passion Test. And they taught me, they taught me how to actually go deep and find what are my passions. So what, um, what I'm going to do here is normally this is a process that takes three hours, so I don't have time here to do this process. I would have liked to do this for a volunteer. But what I'm going to do 
is that I'm just going to put an example that I came up with. This is nobody that I know, it's just my imagination. Imagine that you are a person and these are the 10 things that need to be present in your life for you, for you to be having a fantastic work life, all right? So I am going to explain to you how to create your five top work passions, which are your priorities, asking your heart, all right? So first, I start from the top and I ask myself, if I could be a reservoir simulator, the reservoir simulation department manager, but I could never work with colleagues from all over the world. Or I could work with colleagues from all over the world, but never be a reservoir simulation department manager. What matters most? And then, and then my head wants to go, yeah, but it's very important to be a manager. Okay, I ask you, ask your heart. And when I'm working with people and they don't know what to answer, I say, well, imagine that you are a child and, uh, and I tell you, what do you prefer? Chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? You will not think for a second, you will be like chocolate or vanilla, right? So I want you to go into that frame of mind of, of a child that, that doesn't have yet all those considerations, whether I'm going to have more money, whether this is possible, not possible, just answer whatever comes to you that pleases you the most. So again, if you could be a reservoir simulation department manager, but never work with colleagues from all over the world, or you could work with colleagues from all over the world, but never be a reservoir simulation department manager, what matters most? This is an example, okay? It's not, it's not your, your life, it's not your case. You can put here your own statements. So then you say, for example, one, for me, the most important part is to, have, to be a reservoir simulation department manager, all right? So now you compare one with three. So if you could be a reservoir simulation department manager but never have financial stability, or you could have financial stability but never be a reservoir simulation department manager, what matters most? And you say, for me, reservoir simulation department manager. All right, so now you compare with four, okay? So you get the drill. I'm sure you understand, you're very smart people. So then you're going to compare, you're going to go all the way to 10, and at the end, the result is going to be your priority number one, your passion number one, work passion number one. And then you're going to go again to the top and do the process all the way to the bottom for passion number two, and like that five times. And you get your five top work passions. So now you had those five passions and I'm going to tell you this again. I'm going to bring this image one more time, one more time, because it's important to repeat. How do we create new neural pathways or new habits? Repetition, repetition, repetition. So how are you going to reset your mindset into passion? You are going to repeat and repeat the process that I'm going to explain you in a minute. Because with these three steps that I'm going to explain to you, you are going to rewire your operating system. The first step is intention. Okay, you discover your five work passions, the five things that energize you the most for your work the work that you have or the work that you potentially want to have. Right, now that you have clarified that, you need to make kind of a, like a declaration. Maybe you say this out loud in your room. I declare that these five things are the most important to me. And I, de I declare that I plan to get there and to have this in my work life, okay? Now, if you set 
those intentions, then don't go back. So I, I wanted to put an example of Egypt. If you're setting to drive, I don't know if people drive or they take a train between Cairo and Alexandria, or for a US example, between Houston and Dallas. But imagine that you were going to take the, the car between Houston and Dallas, which, which I had done. I, ha I had driven from Houston to Dallas and it's just too long. It's three hours and a half, but it always becomes four hours. From Cairo to Alexandria, it seems Google Drive, uh, Google Travel tells me only, Google Maps tells me only two hours and a half. But from Houston to Dallas, imagine that you are in your way and suddenly there is like a traffic block, an accident, a roadblock, but you're already halfway. You're not going to go back. What you're going to do is that you're going to find a road uh, motel or hotel and you're going to stay there and then the following morning you go on. Why do I put this example? If you made a decision that these are the things that you're going to do that are most passionate to you, don't go back. Just keep going. Be stubborn. Be firm. And choose based on those things that are more important for you. The second step to kind of rewire that operating system, because you're going to do this again and again and again, is be very conscious that where are you putting your attention? Are you putting your attention on that which you can do or on that which you cannot do? You know, we are in the middle of this pandemic and there are a lot of things that we can not do. All right. But there are also new opportunities. Look, at right now we have this Pio Petro opportunity where right now we are connected, 324 people from all over the world. And we are, we are in this fantastic community sharing best practices. So are you putting your attention on those things that you cannot do or the things that you can do? So that's, that's how you consciously set your attention. Are you focusing on obstacles or are you focusing on opportunities? Because whatever we put our attention on will grow stronger in our life. If we, you are someone, I'm sure you're not, who complain a lot, who only see those things that are not possible, they, those things will grow stronger. There will be more opportunities to complain because that's only what you're focusing on. But that's what you need to repeat. You need to create a habit on putting your attention on the things that you choose, on your passions, and keep looking for them. Where are they? Because if you look for them, you will find them. If you look for the obstacles, you will find them. Your, your brain is that flexible that whatever you put your attention, your, body, your, your brain goes there. Uh, I spend a lot of time in this area of attention because I find it fascinating. Uh, someone gave me this example some, some years ago and it stuck in my mind. Imagine that you are in a party and there is a lot of people. Right now it's unthinkable with this COVID situation, but we will come back to being in a party, being on a party. And there is a lot of noise, can barely hear anything, but someone say your name in somewhere in the, in the room and you, you hear that. Why? Because your, your brain is connected with your with your name so whatever whatever you feed whatever you feed in your brain your brain is going to recognize it okay another thing very important about this step many of you are in a stage of looking for for work starting your career and don't wait until everything is perfect to take action because sometimes it's like, oh, when my CV is perfect, when my work experience is perfect, when anything in your life is perfect. No. Placing attention on something means taking action. And taking action means taking risks. 
and maybe you're going to be rejected. But the more, the more actions that you take, the more that you are creating those habits or choosing in favor of what is important for you. So take action, reach out to people in your networks and don't wait until everything is perfect. And then once you have taken all those actions, there's also a time to stop and relax a little bit because it could be a little bit pushing too much. And I like to put the example of this hose. You know, imagine that the, your perfect job, your perfect opportunity comes to you in a hose and you squeeze it because you want it to come faster. What is going to happen is that the flow of water is going to stop. So there is, there is something like pushing so hard that the flow actually stops. And, and then you get stress. And I study a lot, what is stress? Because I used to be very stressed at some point in my career, and now I am not. Because I recognize the stress when it's coming through. When I start feeling that agitation or stress, I know it's a thought. It's a thought in my mind that things should be different than they are. And then it's when I get stressed. If you have taken a lot of actions because you wanted a certain type of job, you wanted something to come in a certain shape, you also need to be open and not judge what's coming. Because maybe you were expecting uh, a shape uh, that was a circle, it was green, and then what it comes to you is a triangle and it's red. And it's like, well, this is, not, this is not what I wanted in my life. But if you stop judging and relax a little bit and look at this opportunity again, oh, actually, it is aligned with my passions and it's not what I was thinking. So has it ever happened to you that you take a lot of, you put a lot of effort in one area of your life, thinking that you're going to have results and then the results come from a whole different direction. Uh, I, I have this theory, but this is just my belief that the universe likes to surprise us with things. And um, so don't judge what's coming, what it should be happening, and stay in the moment and accept what is, what is coming to you. This could seem contradictory with aligning with your passions but it's not because what is going to happen is that when you are aligning with your passions things are going to come to you and may not look like you thought they were going to look so you need to be a little bit open okay and then this is something very important there is when you have a decision to make and sometimes we make a lot of decisions actually on a daily basis. I ask people how many decisions you, you make on a daily basis. And people sometimes are like, well, um, 20, some, some other person say 200, 100. So sometimes we have to make so many decisions and it's like, how, how, how do we decide? So this is a key for a passion mindset that when you encounter a choice, a decision, or an opportunity, choose in favor of your passions. Once you know them, okay? This kind of mindset at the beginning will be a little bit strange. It will be a little bit weird. It will be like, um, I don't know, I feel strange. But then as it becomes a, a habit, it becomes that up inside your operating system, it will be so natural, so normal. And the more decisions that you make in favor of your passion, the more you're going to have that mindset. That will become your default mindset in your life. And when I say when you encounter a choice, so sometimes you have no choice. The choice has not appeared. Do you have a choice not to pay the rent? Maybe not, but if you have a choice between two jobs 
or maybe you have the choice to volunteer. You're not doing nothing at the moment and you want to do something as a volunteer. Is that something, is that a cause in which you're passionate about? So those are the questions that you, you can ask yourself. Okay, now I'm going to switch to purpose. And then you will have the opportunity to ask me more things about, about passion. What is purpose? And how do you activate a mindset of purpose? I see purpose as contributing to something higher than yourself, higher than your immediate benefit. And it's, it's, it's something that is going to energize you so much that is unbelievable. Because I'm going to ask you, what do you like most? To give presents or to receive presents? For many people, for many people, the, the, the excitement is in to, to, to buy a present for someone, to wrap it, to give it, to see the face that they have, they put when they open the present. That's why contribution is a very important aspect of your happiness and it's something that is going to give you that additional energy. And when you eventually get to be a leader of a team, if you can get everybody working in a common purpose, for a common purpose, a purpose higher than themselves, you see that the productivity of the team is going to go through the roof. And that credit is going to go to you as a good manager. And one way to connect with a, something higher than yourself is ask yourself, what is your cause? There are so many causes in this world. What is your preferred cause? And if you have a cause that is very dear to your heart, for example, these days with the environment, you know, the oil and gas industry is doing more and more things to decarbonize, uh, carbon capture, um, help in the forests around their projects to, um, I know the Shell in New Orleans is working to, uh, to improve some of the nature around. So why don't you propose a cost to your organization? Maybe you can have like a, to be the leader of a specific corporate philanthropy initiative. You know, the corporate philanthropy are proven to increase the, the bottom line for companies because more people get engaged, more people get enthusiastic and therefore more productive. So you can read a little bit more about corporate philanthropy, which is um, when companies actually provide a percentage of their profits to some causes, or can, they can even provide work for free to some causes. Have you considered to be the champion of a cause inside an organization? That will give you a lot of credibility. I'm going to give you some suggestions, something that you may or may not know that you can start researching and giving you ideas. So when you are in your work or in, for your interview, you can talk about the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. These are a plan that has been put in common by all the nations of the earth to end extreme poverty, inequality, and protect the planet by 2030. So if you go to the web and you research United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, you're going to see all these fantastic goals and they are sub goals underneath. And you, you, you can choose, you can say, oh, okay. Oh, affordable and clean energy or decent work and economic growth. I'm going to choose this cause and I'm going to learn as much as possible about it. And when I go to an interview, I'm going to talk about it and maybe I research the companies that are already doing something for this. They already have a high purpose on this. So I can align myself with them or I start my own company to tackle some of these challenges. So the possibilities are endless. 
Okay, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to go from um, an overall purpose, a, a, a contribution of society purpose. I'm going to go to your individual purpose, okay? Your individual purpose as, a, as an individual is like, what, what are you here to do? in this planet and that is a that is a big 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 question but the japanese have kind of solved that equation with four areas and they call the ikigai is the center where all these areas can work in harmony and these four areas are what you love what you are good at what the world needs and what you can be paid for and if any of these areas are not quite in balance you are going to be like mm, something is missing so here is very well explained and this is a graphic i'm going to give credit to toronto star which are the producers of this graphic and uh, they say well if you if you love something, what you're doing, and you're good at that, and actually you can also pay for, but the world, the world doesn't need it. You have satisfaction, but you have a feeling of use, uselessness, right? Or it could also be that you love what you're doing, you're really good at that, is what the world needs, but the world can, is not prepared to pay you for it. You have a delight, you feel fulfillment, but you have no money, okay? Or you can be pay for it and is the what the world needs and is what you love, but you are not good at that. You're really not good at that. So there is excitement and complacency, but you have a sense of uncertainty. You have a sense of uncertainty because you know that sooner or later, <laughs> something is going, to, is going to fall because really you don't have really the experience, the competence in that particular area. Or you can be really good at that, the world needs it, you are being paid for it, but you don't love it. So you are comfortable, but you're feeling empty. So we're taking into account all these components and I think that it's a very good graph for now that you are, in many cases, going to start with your first job to ask you all these questions or start, starting your own company. And I look at it a little differently. And I didn't realize it was going to be so, so many words <laughs> on the screen, but I look at it a little bit different. I use this graph for myself and I, and I ask myself in any given day of what I'm doing, do I love what I do? And if the answer is no, I have two choices. Maybe I stopped doing something. I was you know, participating in some specific uh, initiative and I realized that pff, I really had to pull from willpower. I was, not, I was not really inspired anymore and I was not following up um, where normally are the things that are inspiring and passionate and all, I'm all in, I have a lot of energy. So I decided that I, I had to make a decision either to stop doing it or to love it more. So in order to love something more, you need to ask yourself, you know, what is this initiative about? And recommit with the purpose of this initiative. So when I was able to go a little bit deeper on why all these people has come together for this initiative and, and do my part in there, I was able to love it more and I started feeling better about it. The second question is, am I good at what I do? If I'm a, in a particular moment I feel like I'm not good at what I'm doing, then it's like, okay, maybe I need to change this particular area because I'm never really going to be good at that and I had no interest in getting good at that. But maybe I'm actually quite good at that. And if I just put a little bit of effort, I'm going to get so much better. 
I just need to put a little bit more attention and I will completely kill it, as the millennials say. So this is another interesting question for you. If, if it's something that you really love to do, but you feel that you're not exactly good at that, can you get better? Can you take some courses? There are so many, you know, this is one of them, so many free courses these days that you can take and, and just improve your craft a little bit. The third question, does the world need what I do? Oh, well, maybe I am completely determined and stubborn about doing a specific thing that I think the world should need, but the world is telling me, mm, sorry, we don't really need that. Or maybe I had not done my research because the world is so wide that maybe there is a specific sector, a specific area that will need that. For example, let me give you an example. One thing that I think that the world needs is a business coach just for, for energy industries. Well, there is, no, there is no specific title as per se, but this is what I want to do. Uh, so does the world need it? Well, maybe the world does not need it, but if I do my research, I can find out those specific companies and those specific associations that could need it. So for you, what do you want to do? If you have a specific niche that for you is very, very important, well, find out, do your research to see where the world needs it. Or maybe you need to sell it in a different way. So the world is going to actually learn to need it which is connected with the fourth question. Can I be paid for what I want to do? If the answer is no, maybe you need to change careers because maybe it's something that, you know, somebody has done a PhD or just on one specific type of reservoir, but it's so, so specific that they cannot be paid for that particular experience, but, if they expand that experience and link it with other experience and other knowledge or rebrand it, maybe they can, you can get paid for it. So I think these questions are important to ask them and always keep reviewing, where am I in this graph? So I'm going to come back to the operating system because Purpose is something that we have to carry with us and we need to ask every day before we start our work. Why am I doing this? It's very important because that is going to energize you and it's going to connect you with a higher energy and it's going to give you productivity. So we are creating this habit. It's so much of a habit that you won't even consider not to ask that question. And a habit is for the brain is, a, is that pathway that has been created and it's going to go there by default. So if you want to change a habit, you need to create another pathway. For example, if you have a, a light switch in your room and you change the position for a week, you're going to go to the same, to the same position and oh, oh, oh no, I change it, then go to the other one. The next day, you go to the same one. Oh, no, I change it to go to the other one. So as you go to the second one, those pathways are being created, created, created. And one day, you go directly to the new one. That's what it is. In order to have a mindset of passion and purpose, you need to, once you have discovered your passions, you need to look at your passions, look at the piece of paper, or if you put it in your telephone, look at your telephone, what, what is more meaningful, more important, again and again and again. What is my, pur my purpose? What are my causes? How am I in the Ikigai chart? Again, until one day, you cannot even imagine to live your life and do things that are not connected with purpose and passion. And you're going to be focusing, contributing to society. So one day, Someone will see you and will see how you work and they will be, where do they get their energy from? 
oh, she is always so tireless, always enthusiastic, and he's always coming up with initiatives and projects and ideas, and he's always inspiring others. Oh, I'm trying to catch up with them with my willpower, but it's impossible. And that person will be you. So I noticed that uh, I have a little bit less than an hour. I hope that's okay. Uh, I would hear some points in which you can contact me. You can contact me through LinkedIn. Uh, you can email me directly if you have any more questions. I have also created a discount offer for you on my website. If anybody wants to uh, work a little bit deeper in discovering their passions, I have create, created something special for you and it will be there for a week, uh, specifically for Pio Petro students. And, um, you know, I, I am in, on LinkedIn, reach out, uh, let me know your thoughts, your feedback, and now we are going to have a little bit more time uh, for Q&A. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to live my passion. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you so much, Marina, for the great presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, someone is asking, on what basis can we differentiate between passion and hobby? Between passion and? A hobby. <clears throat> How do you know it's a hobby or it's, between it's a passion, your passion? And a hobby. All right, well, I, I, I'm glad that I, that I put the Ikigai, the Ikigai graph because um, you're going to ask yourself if this thing that I want to do, my work passion, is something that the world needs and it's something that I can be paid for. So if it's a hobby, it's something that you love to do, but you have no intention to make it your work activity. Okay, so what I call a work passion has those four components. I love it. I'm good at it, the world needs it, and I can be paid for it. Great answer. So, um, uh, another question. Someone is asking, can you like suggest some mental tricks to get rid of our tension? Mental tricks. Yeah. Um, to, to increase your, your attention and to be more focused on the present moment, um, meditation is uh, very good because it's, it's just, you know, you can be in silence for 15 or 20 minutes and, and just um, focus on your breathing, focus on your breathing. And uh, it, when, when I do meditation for me, it's like, uh, you know, Marie Kondo, the one that organizes houses. It's like Marie Kondo has come and has organized my brain. <laughs> You know, and then after meditation, my brain is so much clearer. Yeah, this, this brings you joy. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I, oh, exactly. That's a very good question. Uh, if there are, is a thought that comes, uh, is this thought bringing me joy? No, to the being. <laughs> so, so that's one thing. I personally listen a lot to Eckhart Tolle, the author of The Power of Now because it really comes, it comes me. So when I, am, I go for a walk or I'm cooking, uh, I listen, there are many, many uh, teachers, meditation teachers and teachers of uh, the, the power of mindfulness, which can allow you to clear your mind. When your mind is clearer, it will be easier for you to pay attention. But also I want to say one thing that, uh, Attention is also a decision. So once you, you know the things that you want to focus on, you can focus on the positive ones, or you can focus on the negatives. And that is also a decision that if you make again and again and again, then it becomes wired in you. It becomes, it becomes in your operating system. So when you, you, you are there, you know, I remember at the beginning of this crisis that uh, I, I one, one, one day I became very, very, very sad and very negative about what was happening in my country in Spain. And so sad that I became, that I had to get into bed. I was get, feeling sick because I was paying attention only on, to the bad news, but uh, consistently. And then I realized, one moment, what am I doing? I had to pay attention 
and put my attention on the fact that luckily my family is in good health in Spain, in the Netherlands where I live, my family is also in good health. There are many, many people working to solve the situation. So you start, you, you, you pay attention, or, or you, you, you become aware of where you're putting your attention and you switch. That's a long answer. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have another question. Uh, it's a good one, actually. Uh, suppose your work environment does not support your passion, but you're be you're actually well paid. So, and you you, you need the money. We we all do. So, uh, what's your advice in this case? Okay, so we come back to the ikigai. So remember, so imagine that you're doing something that you're very good at. The world needs it because they are offering you a job, you're going to be paid, but you don't love what you do. So then you will have satisfaction, but you will not have fulfillment, all right? So you start, what, my recommendation there is that you start, you start this job and you, you make every effort in attaching emotionally to this job, finding out things to love about it. Maybe you don't love the, um, the activity. Well, imagine, for example, that you want to be more technical and you end up being in sales, for example. Maybe you don't, you don't love everything about sales, but can you find something to love inside sales? Or maybe you find that you love your colleagues or that you love the purpose of the company. So find something in the meantime that you align yourself and keep, keep discovering more things about you. So you eventually aligned with something that is more, uh, more connected with your passions. But in the meantime, find as many things as possible to love about where you are. That will be my advice. And take the, take the job. <laughs> uh, so I have uh, another question. Um... Okay, uh, he's asking, I know my instinct, like when I want to do something. He, I think he, he, he's saying that he knows his passion and he knows when he wants to do something. But at the end of the day, he end up does not, but by not doing that, how he helped himself, I think, stop procrastinating and, you know, go for what he wants. I think this is the question. But I don't understand exactly the question. It seems like so he's giving think that's that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he needs help with um, procrastinating. He needs to stop procrastinating and actually get things done. So he, okay. he, he's asking what, what is the technique just to stop that and just get things done and just jump, uh, jump off the cliff. Okay. I think that what he needs. All right, I, I tell you one thing, if you're procrastinating for a long time about something, and this may not be what you want to hear, but it may be that you really don't want to do it. So you need to go a little bit deeper and ask yourself, what is the purpose of that particular activity? Is that aligned with what you want to do in life? Okay, that's one possibility. Another possibility, let me say, for example, that someone is procrastinating, updating their LinkedIn profile, because I know this is not easy to do, right? So maybe you want, to, you want to get some help. If it's something that is not in your strengths, help, uh, get some help from someone who is uh, very, very, um, very proficient and very competent, because for that person, that is going to be a piece of cake. Another idea, do an exchange do an exchange. So if you cannot pay for a professional to do something specific, look in your network for an exchange. So something that is very easy for you to do, you can do for them. And some, someone who is, you know, very proficient in what you need can do it for you. But look in a creative way, at that thing that you want to do. You are procrastinating because you're finding, dif you're finding this activity difficult. 
and you're making a judgment that you should be able to do it. And then you, you, you are blocked. It's like, I should be able to do it. I should be able to do it, but it's not happening. So you're not supposed to do it. It's not for you to do it. Look for someone else who can do that better than you. I hope this helps. Uh, so last question is actually a personal question. So you can choose to answer or not to answer that. Um, it's about your two masters. Someone is saying that you took a master's of petroleum engineering and an MBA, right? So he's asking why um, did you pursue a career in leadership and stuff like that and not in petroleum engineering as like a technical person? Was it not your passion? And if it was not, why did you take a master's degree in it and from a really great university as Imperial College of London? No, no, no problem. I can answer. Yeah, I, I have my, my, my initial degree was a chemical engineering in Spain. And then when I saw the master's in petroleum engineering, I found it very interesting. I found that when I went for, uh, to Imperial College and I saw all those models of the oil platforms in the North Sea, I found it fascinating. And also the diversity of people. So I decided to study that master's degree. And I, I thought... I thought I was going to do a technical career. And in the summer of my master's, I, I was uh, recommended by my production engineering professor because I have a good, a good grade. Okay, I had the best grade. So he recommended me to go to this small software company to do the internship in London. So I did the internship. And in the middle of the summer, the owner of the company asked me if I was going to go to, if I could go to Venezuela with him to sell the software. And I said, yes, this is an opportunity to get a job. And when I came back, he offered me a job. And immediately, I went immediately to a sales career. So I, my career in, in, as a technical person never really developed. I went immediately into technical sales because my personality that was a better fit. So being technical is not only uh, sitting from a computer doing reservoir simulations or doing well testing analysis or geophysical analysis. It can be also um, doing technical cells. And doing technical cells, I went straight into the world of business, which also interested me more so that's why eight years later i came back and did an mba so this takes me to tell you that your interest could change don't be afraid to make different decisions you may think okay i'm studying this because i want to do this and then something else appears and is more interesting and you feel you know remember the felt sense your body is telling you that you feel lighter I love to go in technical sales trips and meet people from all over the world. I went to Venezuela and Mexico, Brunei, Malaysia, Berlin. And that is something that it really goes with me. So that's why I switch into the world of business and then to coaching. So I don't several, I reinvented myself several times, which is totally fine. I hope this helps. Yes, thank you so much, Farina, for the great presentation and for everything you've done today. Um, we have great feedback from people on the chat box. Uh, thanks again for everyone for joining. And uh, yeah, go follow Maureen Mo on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in knowing more about your personality and finding out your passion, use her code for only Pi Petro students. And we'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Have Bye. a good day. Bye. Bye.